of the main characteristics uh, that help me to identify a chicken is you can see the little bit of variation in the color, how it's this orangish color on the tips and it's lighter underneath. Now these fronds are, are more of a, a knobby um, shape rather than the typical um, really scalloped, flaky, thin petals that you'll see a lot of times on chickens. Now the other thing to consider is this is one species of chicken of the woods. There's two different kinds. One chicken of the woods, which is generally your, uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Lataporus sulfurus or something like that. Uh, that's the one that you typically see growing on trees and you'll see the, the shelf-like thinner fronds and uh, they'll be growing on usually like a hardwood or an ash or, or even sometimes I've seen them on like a, a popple type of tree. So this is just some, some damage here. I would cut that out certainly before I would eat it. Um, this is the species uh, generally regarded as Lataporus cincinnatus. It essentially identifiers that separate this from the, the other chicken of the woods that grows on the tree as a shelf is this has a rosette type pattern. You can identify it by that, which obviously it grows from in and then has the rosette type pattern. And also this tend, this will many times as a young one will have the knobby features. Um, another characteristic of differences is, it's a little bit dirty, this one, but you can see the very light colored uh, under part of these fronds. Uh, again, chicken of the woods, both uh, species or all species, they do not have gills, they have pores. And uh, you can tell with this specimen, it's a very light or white color, where on uh, the chicken of the woods that grows on the trees, that will generally be more of a, a yellowish or orangish color, not quite as white. Uh, so basically when I cook this up, I'm going to take the outer, uh, very tender parts. This inner core is going to go in the garbage. Think of like a cabbage or something like that. Um, generally this is a tougher, like an onion, this is a tougher part of it. That's not what you're going to eat. You're going to eat the tender fronds. And another aspect of this that's worth noting is because these are kind of a knobby um, shape, it kind of indicates to me that this is a pretty young specimen. Um, as it gets older, the fronds will get larger and thinner many times. So as you can see, other than uh, some ants and some little presence of, of bugs, this is a pretty good looking specimen so far. A little bit of damage and soft damage, but certainly uh, that will be cut off. A couple of things to remember about chicken of the woods. Uh, this species, even though it grows on the ground, it grows from the root of the host. It's still um, a parasitic mushroom or saprobic, um, it, which means essentially it grows on wood. So the other chickens of the woods that grow as a shelf on the side of the tree, uh, they're growing from the wood. And this, even though it looked like it was growing simply from the ground, um, you can rest assured there was a root or some sort of wood from the tree underneath the ground that this was growing out of. Uh, generally, these ones are found either at the base of a tree, typically oaks where I live, or uh, very close to the base. You're not just going to generally find them out in the middle of the field unassociated with any sort of trees. Uh, so a couple identifiers for this one. Um, in the eastern plains, they're most typically associated with oaks. Um, they tend to be a little bit paler in color than the chicken of the woods on the tree, than the sulf, uh, sulfurous uh, species. Uh, the white underpores um, are an indicator for me. And um, just, of course, the rosette shape and, um, and the color uh, and the size, of course. As you can see, this is a fairly big mushroom, um, probably about 18 inches across. And uh, those are all good identifiers.